Hi everybody, it's Kylie from Little Moo Designs. How are you today? Thank you for joining me. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install this little snap lock that I got from Precious Time Fabric and Quilts in Toowoomba. So let's get started. First of all, you'll need your coffee clutch that you're working on. You'll need your little lock, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. You'll need some glue. I'm just using Yoohoo glue today. Some sharp scissors, a friction pen, some fray stopper, an extra piece of leather or cork for the back, and also some extra interfacing. You might also find a seam ripper handy. Let's take a closer look at this lock. Sorry for the reflection. It's a bit tricky when you're working with gold. So as you can see, this is how this one clips together. Now there's a whole heap of different types of locks you can get that are going to work with your coffee clutch pattern. I'm going to specifically show you today this one. However, this installation method will likely work for others also. So what you can see is it's got a little press lock there. Press that side and the top comes off. So you have two parts. So this is the top which holds together with screws. So you'll need a, a mini Phillips head screwdriver. I like to use the magnetic ones that you use for your reading glasses because you're using tiny screws like these. It helps for them not to get lost and makes them a little bit easier to screw in. And the bottom looks like this with two prongs. So very similar to a magnetic snap in the way that we install them. So in this little kit, it's got the actual lock part. It's got this one for the back of here, just like we would a washer for a magnetic snap. It's just got a long rectangle one. And it also comes with screws. Usually you'll find your kits come with some extra screws. Keep them aside in case they ever go missing or the thread gets mucked up. They're always handy to have. Let's get started. So what you're looking at here is the flap of the coffee clutch that I'm making at the moment. And all that I've done is folded it in half and put a pin here. It's dark fabric, so it is a bit tricky to see. That is my halfway mark because I want to make sure that I center this lock. The other thing that I've done is before I sewed the flap on, I added a piece of foam just to bulk that up a bit. Now, it will depend on the type of lock that you're using. This one is quite thick. So if I put that on a thin area of the flap, you can see that's going to slide around and not be stable even with screws. Whereas if I come around to my center point there where the foam is, doesn't move as much so this is just the top part of the lock and I'm just going to run some glue along here or oh, sorry in there I do like to use glue and screws just to give that extra layer of support without getting it everywhere And all that I'm going to do is slide that on and find the middle, make sure it's nice and straight. Now that glue in particular dries, um, it kind of goes tacky so it does hold it a little bit in place. Next you're going to take a tailor's awl and you're going to poke, just using the end of it to poke holes where the screws need to go. The reason that we have to poke holes is if you can see there, it's really not a super sharp end to be pushing through fabric. So I just find by poking a hole in there, it's helpful with the screws. So next you're going to screw the tiny screws into place nice and firmly 
like so. Oops. Slippery little. See how the the magnet on the end of my screwdriver just holds that. It does make it a little bit easier. They're just so tiny. I say that as it goes flying. Okay, they're done up nice and tightly. You can feel they're not going anywhere. We'll just let that glue dry also. And then take your pin out. And that is the front piece done. That glue, once it dries, I'll be able to just wipe that away. Now let's do the other side of the lock. Now, you can see how these go together. And because this pattern can use all different types of locks, what I like to do is join it up like this and press down depending on the style of lock I'm using may change the pattern placement slightly it may come down a little bit more may go up a little bit more just depending so I use those prongs to make a mark in my fabric where this is going to sit and then we'll just draw on that with an air erasable marker which of course because it's dark fabric is really hard to see on the screen but I can see it, it's just here. So then what I'm going to do is go and add on the back of this front panel, add this extra piece of interfacing. It's a thick, thicker or stronger interfacing. It's actually not too thick, but what that does is it gives support to the other side of my, my clasp. That constant pulling, we don't want our fabric to wear away. So I like to bulk up whenever I'm using whether it's magnetic snaps or this type of closure so I'm going to go and iron that on the back and I'll be back now once you're happy with your placement just put two marks here which is where we're going to cut with the seam ripper and that's where these prongs are going to fit through so you then just take your seam ripper and you're ripping a hole you don't want to go too big otherwise it will move around so about there. Now just make sure it fits in there okay. And when I flip it over, you can see we're going through that extra piece of interfacing as well. So just before we finalize that, I like to add some fray stopper just so that there's no fraying on those holes that we've just cut with the seam ripper. Then I just take those prongs, push them through from the front of my fabric, flip it over. Now you could just put the washer on and then push those prongs in. But again, I like to bulk this up to make sure it's going to last as long as possible. So I just take my extra piece of leather and cut like so doesn't matter if it's a little bit off there we go then I put my washer on and then I just push those prongs into the center some prongs can be quite hard to push in these ones are, are, are okay if they are too hard you could use pliers to help Sometimes if people have sore hands, they can be really hard to push. So you can see that's not flat. So I'm just going to use the edge of my table here to press them down. Get them nice and flat. Just make sure that's straight. Okay, let's see if it works. beautiful there we go it's as easy as that and that's how you install these little locks this one I got from precious time fabric and quilts in Toowoomba thanks so much for watching and I hope you find this tutorial helpful bye mm -hmm.